my god. What's happening YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day. Why? Because we're talking plants, that's why. <laughs> Excuse me. So, I know I've covered this plant before, but uh, this one is going to be a little bit more focused on the care and propagation, what kind of uh, water and soil they like, temperature, etc. And we're also going to talk about um, why its official name, the Broadleaf Arrowhead Sagittaria Latifolia, looks like rounded spoon-shaped leaves submerged, and why the other ones have uh, the arrow tops. Uh, so we'll talk about that also. But first, I'm going to do a couple shout-outs today. Uh, so I'm shouting out to the three people who have most recently made comments. So I think I'm going to stick with that one. Now, you make a comment, I'm going to say hey to you next time, whether you want to hear from me or not. Ah! So uh, shout out to David, and forgive me if I said this if I say this wrong, David Fulap. And then shout out to Zachary. You you always say hi, but you know, hey, thank you. And shout out to G Family. You're always around to say hey also. So I appreciate you giving me conversations. I appreciate it. Uh, and then the rest of you, you know, you don't have to be scared. Uh, I'm not a scary guy, but even if I was. I'm not going to bust a cap through the internet. You see what I'm saying? You know, I'm on this side of the internet. You're over there. Everything's okay. Say hello, you know. All right, so right here, what we have is submerged grown Sagittaria, broadleaf. So as you can see, no arrowheads. And then as we walk over here where the water isn't moving at all we have all the immersed Sagittaria same plant I promise you I'm gonna look around a little bit longer and see if I see if I find some right in between all right scored a perfect spot all right so all of this this is all Sagittaria and then right over here, look, see how it, it attempted to put out an arrow and it just didn't make it. This one on this side doesn't have any. So their leaves are broader and they look more like a spoon. And then over here, if they do grow the arrow, the stems are thin with the arrow at the tip. And even this one, it has some leaves that have figured out that it's just not happening with the uh, arrow heads and here's a huge mat of it too so you can see some that you know at one point had the arrows maybe the water got a little bit deeper and it started dying off but this is all Sagittaria and this is just a random creek you can find these too anywhere in the world even in Texas I used to live in Texas there's this there are streams and lakes um, I am going to show I was not able to get a good video of it but I'm going to expose a secret on how you can definitely identify if you've got Sagittaria or if it's just something else completely there's something special about Sagittaria narrow leaf uh, dwarf Sagittaria broadleaf Sagittaria they all have something in common and it, it has to do with their roots um, and I took some really close up uh, pictures um, of it to show you what to look for, uh, you know, to make sure you didn't just get some random muck grass or something else. That if you see this on the root, you, you've you got some type of Sagittaria, you're in the right direction. So, um, as I was gathering these, um, I noticed that, that the ones that are growing uh, flat and long like this, they're all in deeper water, and that water is in uh, rapid motion. It's pushing the plant over, okay? Um, now, the ones that have the uh, arrow uh, tops, those are in shallower water that's stagnant. So, I, you know, put two and two together. It's telling me that it can't, uh, those stems can't break the surface if the water's constantly pushing it underwater. 
Um, you know, and then where the water is stagnant, it's able to immerse and grow that arrow head. And I'm going to show you a video um, that I already took here in a second of one that I, ha I have in my uh, tank right now that is actually going through that process. It's dropped almost all of its arrows and in place are growing um, these broad uh, leaves. Uh, now, uh, I do want to show you cleanups. I, I did get these from the wild, and as you can see, these are brown. Now, because um, of my experience, I know this isn't a dying leaf. What this is is a bunch of diatoms. Uh, diatoms are different from algae. Um, uh, they are a silica organism uh, and uh, an, an enigma because they carry the properties of a living um, uh, animal uh, and plant DNA. Uh, but anyway, brown stuff's called diatoms. I'm going to show you what to do so you can get to the stuff underneath that because uh, I have some good looking roots. How to trim them up. I'll uh, also tell you where you can get this plant. It, it's not difficult to get a hold of it. You can, obviously, you can find it yourself. It's all over America. Oh, and breaking news! Just found out this morning. Guess what's new and out of control and evasive in UK? Broadleaf Sagittaria Arrowhead. All right. It's all right. You UK people are getting this stuff now, too, and it's apparently out of control. Help yourselves. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I uh, clean the leaves, uh, what we do to trim the roots, uh, etc. And uh, we will also talk about uh, its uh, propagation and how you can prevent it if you want. Because it can, it can, uh, it can unload quite a, <clears throat> quite a present for you that will appear several months later that you will be shocked that's waiting for you. Uh, so even though I had uh, pictures and uh, videos um, out there, I, I wanted to show that it's actually happening in my tank um, as we speak. So if they can't grow stock long enough for the arrowhead to be at the top and the water current is too fast, um, the leaves take on a different shape. This thick um, uh, stem with a thick arrowhead at the top won't won't uh, break the surface and grow these um, when that's happening. So let me show you. This one is converting to the submerged growth where it's just um, broad leaf leaves. Uh, you know, they're kind of spoon shaped. So th this is like the last arrow head on here. And these two that had melted all the way and are growing new ones back, look at them how they look more like blades of grass. So, you know, uh, all the ones that I had arrows were in much shallower water. The water was stagnant. And the, the ones that are thicker, without the arrowhead sprouting out the top, the water is uh, moving uh, too quickly and it forces the plant to stay submerged. Um, and it just, aqu aquatic plants are just amazing like that. Um, how they are, two completely different plants depending on their you know environment so all right you guys ready for a hands-on tutorial got my plant right here now this cleanup process uh, is good for for all three for your uh, dwarf Sagittaria narrow leaf Sagittaria and the broadleaf uh, Sagittaria what you will need is your plant and it is a good idea to do this even if you buy it from a company and I'll talk about where you can order it from if you're insistent on that going you know at least walking to a stream and seeing if there's some there um, but uh, I'm going to show you how we can clean this so I know it looks uh, pretty dirty like I said before so you will need your plant you need a pair of scissors and no they do not need to be these weird $15 curved aquascaping scissors. Uh, a, a regular pair of kitchen scissors will do just fine. Trust me, I know. A and you know how I know? Be because I already learned my lesson the hard way by blowing money on it and I couldn't find it one day and I use this. So I'm going to use this the whole time and show you it works just as good. And guess how much this was? $1.99 Dollar Tree. Holla! Uh, Alright, so let's first uh, talk about 
uh, the filth on here, all the diatoms and how we're going to clean that off. The second tool you will need is a brand new uh, toothbrush, or like me, I've had this one for a while uh, that I use for this reason. And you will want a uh, double soft bristles. So as soft as you can get it, all right? Because you got to be gentle here. So we're going to focus on this one. I'm going to lay it out flat. Now, uh, these plants can can go uh, can dry out on you pretty quickly, and things can go south if you don't keep them wet. I suggest keeping a spray bottle. Now I've got my toothbrush. So just very lightly, I'm just going to brush over the same spot over and over and over. I'm not. I'm hardly pressing down at all. You don't. You don't need to press very hard. Then you can rub it off on your towel. I'll get it wet again. And uh, yes, is this a tedious job? Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, we're screwing with aquarium plants. I mean, anything we're doing is worth doing right, and it gives you something extra to do. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be a difficult job if we could just buy plants, throw them in the tank, and the plants just figure it out themselves. Yeah, you want to help them with their transition and have the best success as possible to moving into your uh, aquarium. Uh, so uh, they are not picky with temperature. Uh, 65 degrees to 78 degrees is just fine by them. Uh, and they don't mind if your water's uh, acidic or alkaline. You know, wherever it came from, it's going to have to adjust if your water is a little bit different. Uh, neutral water is okay. They do like uh, a particular type of soil, uh, which is called uh, loam soil. And loam soil is just a fancy name for people who use uh, actual dirt and sand. Um, and that's all I do. A lot of my followers do that too. It will have the best results if you use a uh, muddy dirt and sand combo. And uh, it'll, it'll love you for that. If not, you're going to have to start doing the expensive root tab route and, you know, all of that fun stuff and buying fluval stratum every 12 months because it becomes worthless. A hundred bag of, hundred dollar bag of soil that has to be replaced every year when I go outside with a shovel and dig up some dirt for free. Get myself a little bit more water. Oh, you know what? This one's got a bigger surface. This will be better a better view. Show you what I'm talking about. Even though this is a leaf I know I'm going to cut off. I'm just going to show you right fast the difference from a few swipes. See? It took the brown stuff off. Green underneath, it's still alive. Now it's brown and soggy all the way through. Yeah, it's dying. Now this one, and I say this all the time, you see how it has a tear? This whole thing's got to go. Um, I've mentioned it before, but I'll always repeat myself. Plants cannot heal themselves. If there is a tear, a broken limb, or the tip of one was chewed up by a fish like this, it will not fix it. It just can't. What's going to happen is, is the damaged leaf is slowly over time going to melt all the way down to the bottom. It's a long process. And during that process, your plant is going to start sending massive amounts of the uh, nutrients it absorbs to its damaged parts. Well, because it doesn't have a brain and it can't tell itself not to do it no matter how many times it tries it. So if you eliminate the damaged leaf, then it can focus on sending all of its uh, nutrients and minerals to the good stuff and uh, the, you know, the regrowth. So now I've taught you how you can just clean the leaves. Yep, that'll take some time. I did a bunch already. Um, I figured you didn't, you didn't want to watch all of it. So I'm going to uh, show you another way to correctly m remove the leaves that you know need to be cut. Like this one. This one needs to be snipped. And I'm not going to snip it up here. I'm going to snip it all the way as close to the base as possible. Now the reason you don't want to grab, grab these and pull them away from the plant or pull them up and you're going to want to do that is that sometimes it might have a tighter hold than you think and it'll rip half the roots away with it um, and you, you you may have uh, partially potentially killed the plant doing that so just get your scissors in there 
Snip it as close to the base as possible. Bada bing, bada boom. See? My 99 scissors did just fine. Let's see what else I need to snip off. So, and you can also do that before you decide to clean the whole leaf just to realize that you got to cut it off. Yeah, I would suggest snipping off all of the, all of the nuisance first. Let me take a look at a couple of these. Let's see. Uh, it looks like, yeah, I definitely, this one needs to go for sure. And this one. All right, yeah, we got rid of a lot. And, um, you know, don't let that scare you. Um, it, even if you buy it from a nursery or you get it out in the wild, there's going to be stuff you're going to be trimming off. You know, they mail that stuff to you. Um, so H2O Plants, uh, the owner of that channel, because it is a channel, uh, his name's Chris. Um, great great guy, knows knows his stuff about plants. Uh, you can buy from him. I believe he sells one stock for like 7 bucks, But, of course, you can always buy it from, you know, a rando off Amazon. But... Um, I can't speak for those. Uh, the other popular ones, Boost Plants, uh, Dustin's Fish Tanks, and uh, Aquarium Co-op currently only carry the uh, Sagittarius subulata or the Dwarf Sagittarius. I did the work for you, okay? So um, just hjoplants.com and you can order it all online. Um, and he sells it. And I think the submerged form looks awesome. I do like the immersed form too, though, with the arrow. Now with the leaf, now with the roots, you you go through the roots, and you're just looking for the stuff that's white, the stuff that's turning brown and dark. If you can press it and it goes flat on you, it's our it's already got um, uh, root rot for for whatever reason, and it's just best to snip it off. Leave the strong roots, and the strong roots will start to grow healthier roots surrounding it okay plants are magical plants are magical like that all right uh, now I'm going to stop this and then I'm going to show you what you need to look at to identify all right now for this these last two pieces of advice that will help you um, unfortunately I, I wasn't able to get a video uh, we're gonna one we're gonna talk about how uh, you can propagate it um, or prevent it if you don't want it to uh, and then two I'm going to show you its uh, signature pattern on its roots um, that are only on the Sagittaria plants for whatever reason they have that and I could not do a solid video of it I had to take a picture uh, a high quality HD picture zoom all the way in and adjust the brightness and everything so you could see it um, Because holding it up with my hand and then get it. You just couldn't see it that way, but I'm going to show you um, And while I have that up for you to get a good look at it I'll have a picture up of what you need to do to either encourage propagation or to stop it um, All right, so look at this uh, picture here. This is just the roots and um, Yes, it's the roots of one of these uh, Sagittaria, okay? Um, I put a circle around it and look at that single root first and then look at the rest of them. What do you notice when you're looking down there? It has a bunch of uh, dark bands over and over and over. Look at the other roots now. You'll start to notice them on all of those. Now, I have personally seen this on narrow leaf dwarf sag and now broadleaf sag okay I have, and I inspect my plants very uh, closely um, this does not happen with Ballasinaria you know your other tall aquatic grass um, uh, chain sword and um, I have definitely not seen it on any of your you know like your bog plants cryptocorns and uh, you know your ferns uh, Asian water fern, Java ferns, Anubias and all that stuff's more obvious, um, but you see those bands, they're on there. You know for sure it's Sagittaria. Now, I'm not going to be able to tell you what the heck it is if you don't see that, but it's not Sagittaria, you know. Uh, so, 
Now here on the left, um, there is a picture of the little white flowers. All my little white flowers uh, weren't on mine because I collected, you know, the plants loosely and the flowers just fell off. If uh, you want to stop it um, from multiplying by massive amounts out of nowhere, when those flowers start to dry up and turn dark, you need to snip them all off. Uh, what you're uh, stopping is once they're completely dead and they fall on the water, um, that's they're, they're self-seeding. So they are planting, you know, dozens of seeds, and you may have only had two Sagittaria. It went into its uh, perennial dormant phase, and then next summer rolls around, and one day you go down and look at your aquarium, and all your fish are backed up to the wall because there's 87 Sagittaria stems of grass in there. So if you want to prevent it, snip all that stuff up. But it is a runner plant, so it can also clone itself, throw a runner, and grow another one. That process for Sagittaria in particular is nowhere nearly as fast as uh, Ballicinaria. Uh, it's so slow you won't notice it. But if you do, you'll have plenty of time to clip it off before it's dug its way into its dirt. So there you go. And yes, I can guarantee you I am the only YouTuber has, who has exposed the secret of identifying Sagittarius strictly by the root if you are just confused. Or, you know, maybe you ordered some and sometimes there are sellers out there who uh, uh, give imposters as Sagittarius. They say it's Sagittarius and you actually got some dwarf valicinaria or, uh, you know, just something else. All right, those that signature pattern on the roots that is Sagittaria you know they're a perennial so yes their leaves will die all the way down and they'll come back they'll do that four times before they die permanently so if you know it's on its third or fourth time and that one's not going to come back you may want to let it self seed itself if it hasn't thrown a runner by that time and that about sums it up for my tutorials you know and I pride myself in my plant care because there's very few youtubers who show you the plant and do it in front of you. All right, Don't take someone's um, education off their hearsay. You can say whatever the heck you want. It's a whole other thing when you see it with your own eyes. So I stopped believing a lot of YouTubers a long time ago because half the results I got were all mixed and weird and nothing made sense to me. Okay, you know, so for all I know, they just could have made it up at the spot. Just started telling random shit. I have no idea. That's why I like to do a show and tell. All right. But anyway, like always, I appreciate you all. And I want to remind you that if you're having a bad day, you're down in the dumps, the feeling will pass. Okay? Um, so you have that good news. It will go away. All you got to do is just get over that little hurdle and you start feeling better. You start dwelling in your little hole of sorrow and stuff you did 20 years ago you start having wacky thoughts and then you don't know what to do with yourself and oh man kind of thinking a better guzz a little bit of grandpa's cough syrup next thing you know you're sipping a bunch of whiskey and peeing in one of your potted plants and falling over and down the stairs and your whole family it's like what the heck's going on but you're too drunk to explain yourself by the way i just ran made up that whole random story i have no idea if anyone goes that south over a plant but anyway uh thanks again and uh get up and do something about it if you're having a bad day hey at the very least go for a walk that'll get you moving we'll catch you next time